I regularly speak to clients who want to buy a house for their adult child with special needs. And of course their first in, uh, intention is to simply buy it and perhaps rent it to the child or on rare occasion to buy it and put it in the child's name. I think I've only seen that happen once. But we have this discussion and I point out that the use of an intervivus shelter trust is probably a better choice. Um, if they buy it in their own name, then firstly, because the child's living there and play, paying below market rent, they can't write off the other expenses. And when they die, there's a deemed disposition of the property. And at that time, there's capital gains tax payable. Plus, it's part of their estate when the second parent dies. And there's probate fees, which are 1.5% per thousand. So, as a result, if they set up an intervivus shelter trust, they are the settlers of the trust, and they are also typically the trustees. And you could plan to have one of the other siblings, for example, as the alternate trustee when the parents are gone. And if the child lives in the property, and if the child qualifies for the disability tax credit, then the property qualifies for the principal residence capital gains exemption which means that ultimately one day when the, the, the child dies or if the property is sold at some point so that the cash is kept in the trust account, there's no tax under the present regime. And I don't expect that to change. So this is clearly a much better choice. Now if the parent was intending to use their own money to purchase the property, what you would do with the trust is, although you could simply settle $200,000 on the trust. What would be more likely is the parent would take back a promissory note or perhaps a mortgage so that the value that they've put into the house is still part of their estate. And then when they do die, perhaps that mortgage can be forgiven as a part of the Henson Trust in the will of the share of the proceeds of the estate that goes for that child. The additional advantage is that if the child should marry and then divorce, because the trust owns the home, it's not a matrimonial home. So the spouse, the divorcing spouse, doesn't receive half of the value of the matrimonial home, which of course the child wouldn't have it. otherwise anyway if the parents hadn't put the money forward. So you can clearly see that this is a much better procedure. And generally speaking, if you simply calculate how much would be the probate fee on the house on death versus the fees to set up the intervivus trust, generally it's a wash and everybody agrees it's the right thing to do.